Just probably come before we we begin, I will remind all of our audio members of the board procedures and for handling public comments. The public comment portion of our meeting is available to members of the public who wish to address any topic. Anyone who likes to speak during public comment must sign in prior to the start of the meeting and list the topic topics they want to discuss. Each public comment speaker will be allowed a maximum of three minutes to address the board on each topic. The more than 10 speakers are signed to up to speak on the same topic, all additional speakers on that item shall be limited to two minutes. However, any public testimony speaker who tr requires a translator will receive up to six minutes to address the board. Please keep your comments or criticism civil and court courteous. Please avoid using profanity and, and refrain from making personal attacks on others during your opportunity to speak. Lastly, we ask that you do not discuss students who are not your own children. If a speaker is seeking board resolution of a specific complaint, that concern shall be addressed through the district's grievance process. District policy DGBA has been established for addressing employee complaints policy. FNG is the avenue for filing parents complaints. And policy GF addresses community member complaints. Grievance forms can be obtained at any campus administration office or at the district central administration office. Thank you. Our first speaker will be Ms. Mary Maney. Welcome, Ms. Maney. Good evening, board and president and chairman, um, superintendent. Um, glad to be back. And uh, I was really happy to see the agendas for this meeting because I had quite a few comments on most of the items. I'd like to start with uh, admin 2.1, the authorization of pay for January 20th and 21st. Please, this is the first time, I came here in 2014 and Dr. Carmen is the only superintendent I've had so far during that time that has actually been concerned about keeping our pay going uh, for our hourly as well as our uh, uh, professional, the, um, the ones that are on um, contract. Please do approve this. This is one of those that we're lucky to keep our staff that we have and the fact that you're willing to take the step and, uh, and recognize their importance by doing something like this when we canceled school through no, no fault of their own, that they're not penalized for that fact. So again, as I said, I do thank you for being proactive on this and I uh, hope you do realize because most of you are fairly new to the board. Um, as I said, I came in in 2014, and I've had quite a few superintendents during that time. And Dr. Carmen is the first one we've had that has been keeping an eye out on all of our employees. So please keep that in mind when you're thinking about stuff that we're doing. Uh, finance 2.3, the feasibility to lower the 22-23 tax rate. It would be very helpful if you're considering this to also take into consideration what effects the, uh, the possibility of lowering our property tax rate would have on our state funding and possibly federal funding. Um, because if we're saying to these entities, we don't need all the money that we've been getting, they're gonna say, you don't need the money we're giving you. So you need to be, make sure you're aware of how much that's gonna turn around and bite us if you are seriously considering lowering the tax rate. We've been very stable for the last years that we have not changed that rate. Um, so do take that into consideration when you're looking at it. Um, just because we have a fund balance available does not mean we have a fund balance available. A lot of that money has names on it, like our payroll in three years when we start running out of extra monies for fund those pay raises and things that we've done. Um, we don't want to get into a situation like when I came in in 2014, we had like two superintendents being paid at the same time. We had two or three different of the assistant superintendent positions that were doubled up in pay. You know, we had a lot of pay going out for things, a lot of money's going out that was not necessary. Okay, now onto the good stuff. Curriculum 2.1, the MOU with Workforce Solutions. Please sign off on this. Um, this helps with our co-op program, but this also is STEMS related for a lot of our kids that may not really be able 
to go into necessarily a college straight from school, if they have the opportunity to get into some of these middle level, entry level positions, they can actually work their way up without having to um, uh, go through all the college stuff. And if they prove themselves, then those businesses may pay them to go to college. So this is something that really works to our benefit. And uh, I really do encourage you to say yes to that one. Uh, curriculum 2.3, the Mark White Learning LLC, please. <laughs> um, I've worked with Mark White for three years now as part of cohort two um, under this rigor and relevance thing. He is incredible. He has helped our teachers so much, and not just at the high school level. It's across the board on this. Um, and I wasn't too happy about the fact that that contract was, was uh, ending where we wouldn't have a chance to still work with him. Because every time he comes in and refreshes with the older cohorts, I always learn something new or be able to twist something to make it better for us. So please, again, that's a good program, let's keep it. And on curriculum 2.4, the Higher Achieving Scholar Program through uh, Texas A&M, um, this program's been around for a while. Uh, we have been trying to get students, it is for 11th graders only. It is through, uh, it is associated with NASA, the uh, Johnson Space Center, and it's very hard to catch the 11th graders for it. This is, a, this is an incredible opportunity for them. I usually can catch kids at the 10th grade and the 12th grade, but I haven't had a lot of, I've only had two in my time here that I've actually been able to get into at the 11th grade to get into this program. It is an incredible basis, not just if you're interested in space, but if you're interested in engineering. It's got great mathematical and science applications. It's, it's a really, really good program. And if we can get more help targeting 11th graders to do it, because we've got the kids to do it. They've got the smarts. They've got the ability. It's just a case that we got to capture them and encourage them. And um, that's at the beginning of the school year, which makes it kind of difficult. But again, Overall, I'm very happy about it, the entire conference, uh, the entire agendas for these, and I hope we have a good day. And thank you so very much. Next item will be 2.1 review discussion regarding Riverside Tennis Sports Soul Simulation Change Order requests. I believe we have some uh, representatives from Hellas here. They're going to discuss this request and then Mr. Pettis is available as well. Uh, good evening, uh, my name is uh, Joanne Lanzanita. I'm the uh, project manager for Hellas Construction. Uh, this is Jeremy Anderson, he's our general superintendent um, for, the, for this region. Um, we are here to discuss the uh, potential change order um, for subgrade um, improvements uh, for the tennis courts at uh, Riverside Middle School. Um, we presented Mr. Perez with a change order of $160,000. It's like $163,25, I believe. Um, or I'm sorry, $162,35. Um, and this consists of being able to over excavate three feet, um, moisture condition uh, nine inches below that over excavation and backfilling um, the natural soils up to 12 inches and then select fill up to two feet. Um, and uh, I guess just wanted to open it up for any questions regarding that change. I, I have a question. Why wasn't this included in the previous, when we approved the, the, the tennis courts the first time? So the original proposal yeah. included uh, removing the first six inches, which is just usually right. for your organics. Um, we didn't have any geotech um, included uh, when we did when we got the when we sent you the proposal. We didn't we didn't have any geotech information. So as part of the proposal, uh, we did send a geotechnical engineer to mm -hmm. collect borings, and based off of their recommendation, after the fact, was uh, to over excavate your three feet. This is a lot of money. And what was it done before, ma'am? How come you didn't do that before you submitted all this? Uh, so. It, we're not typically part of the bidding process. 
But it's my understanding that as part of the RFQ, I mean, unless it specifically says to provide, you know, geotech information prior to it, we, I mean, we just, we kind of have to go off of the information that we're given. Is this your first tennis course you all built? No, okay. it's not. I mean, you know. Or it just somebody just dropped the ball on this, or normally it's provided by when the bid goes out. When you guys send it out, there's also attached to it a geotechnical report to give that we then review and then give you back the estimate based on the geotechnical information. But it's also my understanding that during the bidding process that the um, that the estimator did mention that the uh, stabilization was not included in this proposal. Mr. Pettis. Sure. Would you mind answering a question for me real quick? Did we not provide Hellas with the, um, the geotech inf information from when we built Riverside? I, mean, I realize it's been a few years, but it's the same dirt. Didn't, didn't we provide those? Well, we, we did, sir, but it was after, after the fact when they did the first geotech. So they wanted to do an, a second one, so we provided the one that Riverside had originally so they could compare the similarities because they wanted to go back out. It would have taken another six weeks before we got to this stage now. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we provided the data, they made a comparison, it's very similar. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Sorry. Weller, if I, if I have a question in reference to the bidding process, when we went all the way back to the bidding process, is that appropriate to be brought up at this point? And it's, um, it's basically, it's a, it's a know, comment, but I want to make sure that I don't, I don't state something that shouldn't be stated. It, 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 I mean, there are aspects of this could, that could be discussed in closed session if you'd like to do that. Perhaps okay. We'll okay. do that. Probably rather do that then. I, I, I would rather wait till we discuss it in closed. So uh, I, I, um, other board members may have questions as well, but uh, we can probably move to put it on the agenda. But prior, or during the, the meeting, we can bring it up and discuss it during closed session because I've got some concerns as well. It's 160,000. I mean, I mean, that's a lot of money. I mean, that's a lot of money. I would understand it was 50,000 or less, but you should have you should have addressed that issue before in the bidding process. That's my opinion, but yeah, we need to discuss it in executive session. I agree. And my question is to the legalities of, of it also okay. if we had already signed some kind of agreement uh, as to the tennis courts being built and now they're coming back with a, another proposal where where it's adding $160,000, and that is a concern uh, to me legally. And uh, I will address it back to Mr. Weller about that also to see is if this is even doable, that we are able to make these changes or not. And uh, like Mr. Moreno said, we need to discuss this further in executive session. I guess my only concern is if we did provide you guys with a geotechnical, and you guys looked at the date, and it was several, year ago, several years ago when that whole uh, when that school was built, I just don't understand why the communication wasn't set forth there with our with our director and rolled out back to the board as far as a huge increase. Uh, we've been we've been planning for this for this project for a while now. We've we've allocated money to this project when they could have gone to something else. So at this moment in time, I I, I push that we table this 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 item until further discussion. Mr. 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 Silva, thank you. I'll second that, and and I would understand that you know, this is a lot of money, and it falls. We have to approve it now, technically. Hopefully we don't, if legal doesn't allow it, but you're putting us in a bind. You see what I'm saying? 160,000? 160, I mean, that's a lot of money. I, I will say, so I mean, when we when that's, we perform- That's the big house. <laughs> right, yeah, and I completely understand. But when we performed the, the geotech, uh, the geotech borings were done in November, and we didn't get issued the actual report until about the end of December. And at the time when we looked at it, we thought, we thought so too that it seemed conservative. Uh, but then Mr. Perez sent me the report from 2005 and we compared the two. And then we actually went to an additional uh, geotech company to take a look at the report that we were given. And they, they said that they wouldn't even recommend doing additional uh, bores because they would say the same thing. So, I don't agree, but I, okay, I so second the motion, so. To, to table it, okay. I, before, I know there's a motion, but can I make a comment as well? Sure. Just, just, yes, sir. Uh, sure I'd like to make a comment that th the way we're proposing this, we're, we're proposing to table it, uh, you know, versus putting it on the agenda and discussing it further at our next meeting. I, I, I am of the opinion that if we table it, it's going to prolong it even more. So I, I, I think there's a difference between tabling it and, and uh, 
and putting it on the agenda, discussing it in closed session, and then moving from there. Tabling it is going to prolong it more. Well, the, well, the reason why well, the reason why I mentioned table it is because you know, like once again, here we go. You know, we've we've allocated certain funds to this. You know, there's there's other there's other uh, extracurricular activities that that are requiring, you know, these monies. And if we're gonna if we're gonna you know invest this amount of money, I say we table it now and then uh, we bring it back at a later date. Thank you. Well, as a board, we already voted to go ahead and get the tennis courts built, and um, I'm gonna say for us to just go ahead and continue with our discussions with our, our, our attorney and get his input as to what we can do in this situation and move forward with getting the tennis courts built. Well, Mr. Will, at this time, I think it's up to the board since we're the ones that made a decision to pay, so now there's gonna be a, an, an additional 60,000, or 160,000. So I think I'm, I'm in the right to say as a board member, as look, looking out for our taxpayer dollars to say to, to, uh, to table at this moment. And actually, Mr. Weller, just to piggyback on that, it is a motion. And so I would say he, he moved and the motion has been seconded. So I, I guess it would need to be put up to, to a vote. But this Please. is a committee meeting. We're not uh, oh, that's right. We're not, we're voting. not voting. There you go. I'm meeting. sorry. Stand corrected. Just, Thank you. This is Thank just you. discussion. There, you know, if I may interject a little bit, there are aspects of this. Is you do have a written contract with, with Hellas. And, you know, the review that needs to occur is what does the contract talk about in terms of uh, unknown side conditions. Were they clear uh, from the outset? Were they not? It's a contract evaluation right now to determine whether Hellas is entitled to something like this or whether the district wants to take other action under the contract if you don't wish, wish to proceed with the project. Um, in either scenario, I think you would benefit from sitting down and closed and letting us examine all the contract documents and then advising you as to what's the best course of action for the Can you review the because contract, I, Mr. Weller? Can you review the contract? Absolutely. Okay. I've reviewed, I reviewed it once already, and there's some of the other contract materials that I think would be helpful. Uh, and then we can, you know, we, we can discuss it in close now if you'd like to, uh, or we can discuss it in close at the regular meeting. Well, being, go, going back to what was said earlier, and, and I stand corrected as far as we're not voting, we're discussing, I, I still say that we need to, uh, it, it would need to continue. I say let's put it on the agenda and discuss further in closed session uh, at, at our next meeting, on Tuesday's meeting. I have a question, Mr. Wheeler. We as a board, can, 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 we, uh, can we vote to terminate a contract, yes or no? I would need to look at the contract uh, to give you that information and give you accurate information on that. So just to kind of to summarize, if the board wants legal advice, it's on an agenda in some sort of fashion right. for next Tuesday. Correct. Following that, the board can decide if they want to approve this change, table it, deny it, et cetera. So that would be the course of action being recommended. Am I summarizing that correctly? Yes, sir. Got it. I have a question, and this might just be a moot point. This is necessary in order for us to proceed with the project, basically. Correct. Okay. 